Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's always something to do in the fields, I mean, unless you come when it's pouring down rain. But uh, then there's, oh, there's all sorts of other chores. Uh, cooking, we actually cook every morning. Mm -hmm. uh, the, who, whoever's at the, at the house will cook the meal uh, that everyone eats. Nobody brings a, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you've, you hope to be a good cook or at yeah. least something decent. At least something decent. Something not to, not to poison everyone is, <laughs> is definitely a goal. <laughs> uh, now, what kind of meals do you eat? Um, since, you know, obviously not everyone will be a great cook and you kind of do it <laughs> trial by error in some cases. Mm -hmm. so, so what do you eat for the farm? Well, it's, we, we eat food that is prepared from recipes that still exist mm -hmm. from the time period. There are cookbooks that have been reprinted from the, the 1700s. Mm -hmm. And so we've picked, uh, we picked generally the simpler recipes because a lot of these cookbooks were made for the rich people. Mm -hmm. and, and so we figure the, the, the poor folks are probably not going to be preparing a, a seven course feast every day. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So it's a it's a lot of fairly plain food, fairly bland food. It would taste to us. Uh, British cooking of the 18th century was was fairly bland, and the, the stuff that wasn't bland combined a lot of spices that and and flavors that you you find odd today. Like um, like a, there there's a uh, an <coughs> onion pie that I that I make mm -hmm. uh, from a from an original recipe, and so it's onions and potatoes and apples baked in a pie. Hmm. And I looked at that the first time and went, apples? And I get, I get the potatoes and the onions, uh, but, but the apples, that was just, uh, but it, it's actually quite good. Uh, now, now, pies, of course, being a, a, just another way of baking things, by the way. I saw, I, I saw your face. The, uh, like, they, they, they were like, just, uh, oh, excuse me, uh, I, I can only imagine, because <laughs> I, I think I like onions, and I like potatoes, and I like apples. I don't quite know if I'm willing to go ahead and put them all in there. So I'm thinking to myself, wow, my throat's already saying, <coughs> oh no, <laughs> don't do it to me, don't put that into me. Because you don't, you don't think those things. No, no, it's, it's just a different, a different taste, a different cuisine at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but what we eat a lot of is corn, because we, we grow that, that was, that was a pretty big staple at the, at the time, especially for the poor folks. And so we, what we'll do, the most basic dish is corn mush. Uh, what is corn mush? You take the, the whole dried kernels and pound them up in a very big mortar and pestle and then until they're in rough pieces and then boil them until they're soft. And that's hmm. it. The modern day, they're called grits. And how good are they? Uh, <clears throat> they're, they're, they're filling and if you add something to them, then they're tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're rather bland. Uh, but you know, if you're working real hard on a farm all day, you're ready to eat about anything. Mm. Now, <clears throat> how many? <clears throat> excuse me. How many meals a day do you eat at the farm? Do you eat all three meals, or no, no, we we don't. It, it is a real working farm, mm -hmm. but we're not there for the hours that a real farm family would be. Um, that would be sun up to sundown. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, and and so no, no, we we the only meal that we eat there <clears throat> usually is dinner, which is the the middle of the day, the main meal. Okay. Now, uh, for your dinner, you have your mush, you have your pie. Is it a big meal? Is it a little meal? Dinner was the biggest meal of the day, yes. Uh, and that carried through actually until relatively recently. Um, mm. the, now, dinner's still our biggest meal, we just mm. eat it at the end of the day instead mm. of the middle. So it was, it was breakfast, dinner, and then supper. Okay. Yeah, because I know uh, growing up you hear people of older generations still refer to lunchtime as dinner time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's kind of interesting to see that switch. Now. <clears throat> What kind of activities do you have for children to do? I mean, you said summertime, you have weeding. Now, do you have those naughty children who come with summer camps and you just throw them out in the field and say, you weed until you <laughs> learn your lesson? <laughs> oh, my. We don't have to do that. You, you should see the children when they, when they come and we say, we, we're weeding the garden. Would you like to help us? And they say, oh, yes. <laughs> and, they, and they troop out to, and they, they help us weed and they'll carry water and, 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 and help us water the garden and they'll collect firewood. And the parents are all standing there going, these kids never do work at home. <laughs> How are you doing this? <laughs> it's, it's really quite funny, but they love it. The kids really love it. And uh, what else do you have for the kids to do? Um, well, I certainly love seeing the animals. Mm -hmm. that, that's a real big thing. And, and the animals, as many of them as possible, are free range. Mm -hmm. So they're just, they're just out in the open. You can, you can get right up close to them. Um, the, we, we have chickens and geese and turkeys and uh, the, the larger animals, the, the cows and pigs, are behind fences, um, which they, they wouldn't have been at the time. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, they, they tended to just let their animals wander around loose, mm -hmm. which you, you can't do in these, in these modern times. It's fun. <laughs> it might be. 
You'd be on the news. So uh, you have that well, much. yes, possibly. Well, not necessarily good luck. Now, <laughs> now for adults, what activities do you have for the adults? Because obviously the parents are watching their kids. They see them weeding. It's like, yes. <laughs> what can the adults do? The adults really enjoy speaking with the, the staff and the volunteers. Uh, although, actually, just a side note, the, the adults also often like helping us out as well. That's, mm -hmm. that's not just for, for kids. Uh, but the, the adults, we've gotten into some really good conversations with some of the adults that come through, just, just about what life was like at the time and what the different roles of, of people were in, in society and what, uh, what, a, what a, a family that, whose income is based solely on agriculture, what they have to worry about uh, with, the, with the changing weather and, and the dropping price of their goods. Mm -hmm. Now, the average person that comes in, are they very knowledgeable about uh, colonial life? Or oh, do you find yourself kind of at the, being asked a question where it's like, hmm, how can I answer this appropriately without having to feel as if, why don't you know this already? Because I, mean, I know for myself, I get asked the, the occasional really bad question. That scene, it's like, what's that little shiny thing on your sleeve? This is called a button. You should know this already. I mean, do you ever well, get those kinds of questions, or? Well, yes, but on the other hand, the questions that that you get asked, you just have to, you just can't assume that that anybody already knows something. Mm -hmm. um, and oftentimes, the question that that to me just seems obvious because I I live in this in this life. Mm -hmm. I have to remember, oh yeah, not everybody does this all the time, and mm -hmm. so this is new for them. And, and I, I tend to figure with some of the questions that, that seem really simple, mm -hmm. uh, what, like what I tell the, the kids who volunteer, is, is to assume that they were either trying to make conversation and didn't know what to say, so they just said something, or actually had a, a, a different question in mind and just couldn't, couldn't quite get the right phrasing out. Okay. And it can be intimidating, you know, you walk into a, into a place and someone is dressed in really bizarre clothes mm -hmm. and, and talking to you as if it's the year 1771. Mm -hmm. And so we, we try really hard to put people at their ease and, and draw them into conversations and, and, and not to make them feel awkward. Okay. Now, you mentioned the clothing because, let's face it, if you or I walk down the street, we will bring a lot of attention to ourselves. But some folks will come up and say, I love what you're wearing, what is it you're wearing? So. Uh, you know, I've talked about men's clothing before. Never had the opportunity to talk about women's clothing before. And so oh. now, uh, center stage, <laughs> what are you wearing? What am I wearing? Well, I'm wearing over 10 yards of linen. I counted once, <laughs> <laughs> just for fun. And so what I'm, I'm wearing is a pretty basic, uh, regular woman's garb. So the, the blue here is a gown, and that goes all the way down to my feet. Now a gown at the time didn't mean a fancy, anything fancy, it, it just meant a dress. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it pins up the, up the front here. I've got a, I've got a kerchief for, for modesty and, and to prevent sunburn, because the, the fashion at the time was for very wide necklines on, mm -hmm. on women. And uh, I've got an, an apron, very important for all sorts of things. I use this as, uh, as, as a very important tool. Carry firewood in it, uh, wipe my hands on it as a towel. Uh, it, oh, it's great. It's even got a few patches. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've got a petticoat on under my gown. That's a skirt, basically. Uh, and then you can see a bit of my shift. That's the, the undergarment. Now that, that covers my, my elbows and it goes down to my knees as well. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the undergarment and the pajamas. So it's the equivalent of the shirt that, that you're wearing. Okay. And then, and then I've got my cap on. Mm -hmm. all, all, uh, all, all, everyone ran, went around with their heads covered, as, as you know. I mm -hmm. see you've, you have a lovely wig on. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's a case of lice, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You know, you know what you can use for that is uh, crushed tobacco leaves. Oh, well, there you go. That, you that learn was something a, new every day. That was a, uh, that, that was a remedy at the time. Uh, now, uh, if someone, if, if uh, now, on your website there's a video, and uh, you go over all the women's attire and all the men's attire. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, how do I look for the men's attire? Am I actually right on the ball, or am I really taking some liberties with history here? Oh, <laughs> well, it looks fine to me. I, I would certainly uh, possibly run the other way if I saw you, because, oh no, there's a soldier coming to our farm. <laughs> what, what have we done? <laughs>